did, but it was pretty sparse. Okay. So feel free. Don't be shy. Okay. You just have to do it. Okay. Uh, thank you for all of you for coming. I know that uh, it appears that the media is doing its own uh, silence of, of this press conference. But uh, we will report it. And so all the conversation that we plan to have today will be recorded and we will, will be out in all the media that we could potentially put out. So that's the good thing about the camera. So uh, we will get, get rolling. Again, thank you for all of you for coming here today uh, and joining us uh, in this coalition. Uh, my name is Giovanni Hussain. I'm the care uh, outreach director. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm a, a little louder, maybe, oh, would yeah. be good. Yeah. Can we actually turn off the timer? <laughs> 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 All right. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, <clears throat> again, my name is Giovanni Hussain. I am the Care Outreach Director. Um, and uh, here today to MC the, the, the press conference. Uh, as all of you are here today, we're here uh, to um, to really not remain, ignore, or remain silent about uh, the killing of innocent civilians, uh, especially with children in playgrounds, at the beach, in uh, targeting uh, civilians in hospitals and schools, uh, the killing that Israel has taken on in this past weeks has been uh, something that has been that has led us to, to what we are doing today, which is to speak against that. Um, and the coalition here today is included with over 50 Minnesota organizations, a very diverse Minnesota uh, organizations, in an effort uh, to strengthen the call that we're making today, which is very simple. Number one, enough is enough. That is the first and most important part. The second part is we're calling for an immediate and to all airstrikes on civilians in Gaza. Uh, in an effort to strengthen that, uh, the, these organizations have endorsed uh, for boycott, disinvestment, and sanctions in support for the Palestinian human rights. And today you will learn more about uh, the same messages as the speakers who are here today will speak upon that. Speaking of our speakers, they come from diverse backgrounds and communities that include Muslims, Christians, and Jews, from civil rights organizations to peace and justice groups, and many others. So without further ado, I would like to bring forth the first speaker, uh, Fadwa Wadwas. Fadwa is not here yet, so we'll move on to our next uh, speaker. Uh, Jordan. I, oh, I, can I speak? Yes, come on up. Sorry. Uh, Sister Fenwick cannot be with us today, so she was going to read the official statement that we released, and so I will do that. Oh, my name is Amber Michael. Hey. Um, today, over 50 Minnesota mosques, interfaith groups, <laughs> civil liberties organizations, and other groups concerned about peace and justice are here to address the humanitarian crisis in Gaza and call for an immediate end to Israeli attacks targeting civilians. Israel's use of unjust and disproportionate force against the Palestinians in Gaza stems from the vast international military cooperation and trade that it maintains with complicit governments across the world. We are here to announce our support of the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement in support of Palestinian human rights. Israel's ongoing assault on Gaza has killed more than 1,000 Palestinian civilians, including more than 250 children, and injured more than 6,000 civilians. It has devastated the civilian infrastructure, including the health sector, which is facing severe shortages. Israel is using the full force of its military against the captive Palestinian population, particularly in the besieged Gaza Strip. The UN reports, UN reports indicate that 80%, 80% of 
of the people killed in Gaza have been civilians, raising very serious concerns about Israel's total disregard for international and humanitarian law. In Israel, two civilians have been killed by Hamas rocket attacks, some property has been damaged, and more than 50 soldiers have died since the Israeli military invaded Gaza. The loss of life or infrastructure on either side is unacceptable. And next we'll have uh, Jordan Cash. Jordan Ash. Um, not to be confused, there's the only other Jordan in Minnesota happens to, to be here also, so Jordan Kushner. So often I get emails that are meant for him. So I'm, uh, I'm Jordan Ash. I'm a member of Jewish Voice for Peace, and uh, I'm honored to have been invited here, um, although the, the circumstances are extremely unfortunate. When asked to teach someone the entire Torah while standing on one foot, Rabbi Hillel said, that which is hateful to you, do not do to others. That is the whole Torah, the rest is commentary, go and learn it. Supporters of Israel's military offensive in Gaza have violated the central tenet of Judaism by disregarding Israel's hateful actions. Several sources have confirmed that this entire escalation was artificially created by the Israeli government, which knew for weeks that the three kidnapped teenagers were dead, but maintained the lie that it hoped to find them alive to justify the mass arrests and collective punishment of Palestinians. The Israeli government also fa insisted falsely that Hamas was responsible. The result of this manufactured crisis has been devastating. I'm a member of the Mount Zion Synagogue in St. Paul, which recently completed a year of Sedeq, a year of justice. In his sermon to kick the year off, Rabbi Spilker said the pursuit of justice has been part of Judaism since Abraham's arguing with God over innocent lives and Sodom and Gomorrah. It is this tradition that requires us to look at the root cause of the current crisis, Israel's continued occupation of the West Bank, Gaza Strip, and East Jerusalem. The occupation denies the very humanity of Palestinians while valuing Jewish lives at the expense of others. For almost 50 years, the Israeli military has had total authority over every aspect of Palestinian life in these areas. Palestinians are subjected to daily and systematic home demolitions, checkpoints, arrests, and indefinite detention. The occupation denies the very humanity of Palestinians while valuing Jewish lives at the expense of others. Jewish Voice for Peace believes that there will not be an ending peace, enduring peace until Palestinians can negotiate from a similar position of strength as Israel. And in order for this to happen, there needs to be a change in the current imbalance of power, and we believe that BDS is a central part of the nonviolent strategy necessary to bring about this shift. And I'd also like to add and to, and to invite folks um, Tomorrow uh, at, at noon, we uh, have a group of people who will be reading the Mourner's Kaddish in front of the Jewish Federation of St. Paul. Um, the Mourner's Kaddish is an ancient prayer. It's been said for 2,000 years. It's meant to honor and commemorate our loved ones. And um, we read the names of those recently deceased, so we'll be reading the names of, uh, of, of, of those killed in, in Gaza. Um, and we invite everybody to join us. Um, it's, uh, so it'll be at noon, I think we're meeting at 11.45 at the, the Starbucks uh, in Highland Park at the Barnes & Noble. Thank you. And next, I would like to introduce Elizabeth. Um, so my name is Elizabeth Gashir, and I am a volunteer organizer with the Minnesota Break the Bonds campaign. Um, Minnesota Break the Bonds is a boycott, divestment, and sanctions campaign that has been around Minnesota since 2008. Um, as many of you probably know, in 2005, Palestinian civil society put out a call for boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel until Israel complies with international law and human rights. Um, as a means of putting nonviolent pressure on the Israeli government to change its policy um, of apartheid occupation and colonization towards Palestinians and Palestinian land. Um, so we as an organization formed in order to have a local campaign. And we 
particularly are asking the Minnesota legislator and the Minnesota State Board of Investment to divest from Israel bonds. So as you may or may not know, the state of Minnesota, in addition to what our federal government gives to Israel, the state of Minnesota has about $30 million worth of Israeli government bonds purchased. And these are shown to provide funding um, through the profits from this, their sale to infrastructural projects such as the illegal light rail that's snaking through the West Bank that's for Jews only, um, you know, as well as uh, water projects that steal water from uh, the West Bank and give them to settlements, um, and other such infrastructural projects that privilege Israelis over Palestinians, um, as well as um, to the annexation of land through the building of the apartheid wall, um, and other things that are part of the ongoing oppression that is happening in Palestine. And so we, as an organization, say we will not fund Israeli oppression, and we want our money taken out of these Israel bonds. Um, so it's exciting to be here with you all today. Um, we're honored to have been invited, and we hope that you all will find a way to get involved in getting our state of Minnesota to divest from Israel bonds. We have many events. Um, we have postcards that you can sign here with us today, in fact, um, that we send to the state board and to legislators. Um, and we'll have actions, you know, of course, as usual, coming up in the next number of months. Um, one in particular I want to put on your radar at this moment is that in September, at the quarterly State Board of Investment meeting, um, I can't remember the exact day right now, but in early September, oh, I'm getting a hand signal, September 9th, thank you, we will have, um, hopefully, a press conference and a big presence at that State Board of Investment meeting to say, really, Governor Dayton, and Secretary of State and the Auditor um, and the Attorney General, really, after this latest attack on Gaza, you can still justify putting Minnesota tax dollars into um, you know, the Israeli government and their violation of human rights and international law. Um, so I hope that you can join us on September 9th um, to say not in our name. Next, I would like to introduce you know, Mahmoud. Mm -hmm. As-salamu alaykum. Mm -hmm. God's name is the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Uh, on behalf of Mesh and Noor, I am honored to join so many uh, Minnesota organizations to come out and support uh, and really stand as a voice against these crimes against humanity that are taking place in uh, in Gaza and uh, Palestine. Uh, I feel it's a moral imperative as a faith leader to speak out against such injustice. And though we are somewhat disappointed that the media is not here as it should be here, uh, but, but we uh, understand that there is a concerted effort to silence this, this, this movement. And I, I would like us not to despair or to feel down about this at all. You know, uh, our, our religion tells us sometimes you say to go ahead with a heavily equipped or lightly equipped. Mm -hmm. So well, we are very much uh, uh, energized and our spirit is very, very strong in terms of supporting our Palestinian brothers and sisters um, because it is just the right thing to do. Uh, the voices of around the world are speaking out and are uniting more and more around this. So let us not think that our efforts are going in vain and we're not willing to remain silent because you, as you know, it is a very common term that silence is consent. We are really also calling upon our government, the United States of America, to do more to uh, end this senseless violence against uh, women and children and elderly and those who are civilians in this situation who are collateral damage. This is just totally, totally unacceptable from my perspective. I've been in touch with many faith leaders around Minneapolis uh, and the state of Minnesota who are also supporting uh, this, uh, this, uh, this effort. Uh, we are not alone in our voices. They condemn these, uh, these acts as deplorable crimes against humanity. And finally, 
in Islam, it is it said when you see it wrong, you change it with your hand. If you are unable to change with your hand, then you speak out against it. If you are unable to even speak out against it, then you dislike it in your heart, but know that that is the weakest of faith. I am encouraged and delighted that we are not taking the weakest of faith. And when this video recording of these comments come out today, I have only two instructions for you. Like it and share it. So we have one more uh, speaker, uh, Brother Majid, from the, uh, or from the Alpha Foundation. No. 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 Yeah, one more speaker is not on my list. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. There's 50 organizations. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, my name is Jihad Adwan. I'm a Palestinian uh, from the Gaza Strip from the southernmost uh, town right next to the Egyptian border, which is called Rafa, uh, Rafa refugee camp. Mm -hmm. I've been in Minnesota for the last uh, 15, 16 years, and uh, there hasn't been any, any time where I felt so um, sad and angry and vulnerable like these days. Um, I was able to visit the Gaza Strip last year with my family. I have four kids and my wife here in Minnesota. We visited in 2013. So I was able to see all um, my family members that I hadn't seen for 13 years then and meet all the little faces and the nephews and the nieces who are now grown up and they have kids and all their kids and their families and neighbors and the neighbors' neighbors and everyone. Um, it was a great visit, but we had a lot of hardship coming out of there. Um, needless to say, the Gaza Strip has changed uh, tremendously in the last 10 years. It almost doubled in population. Uh, when I left, there, were, there was room in the streets to walk and cars to move and uh, people, vendors on the street to have room to put their goods to sell them. Now there isn't any, any room for that. So you can imagine how crowded uh, the Gaza Strip was. And the lack of resources when we visited, um, water is very uh, hard to come by, drinking water especially. Uh, electricity, you get electricity for six hours uh, in 24 hours in the middle of summer. Here we you know, complain we have only fans, we don't have any air conditioner. But living in a 100 degree temperature 24-7 um, is different. What makes things different today? And uh, more intolerable is this constant bombardment by the Israeli military with its superior power and killing machine that uh, we're all paying for with our tax dollars. And what adds insult to injury is our government's uh, blind support mm -hmm. and um, unwavering uh, support for Israel no matter what Israel is, do is doing it's self-defense, and whatever the Palestinians are doing is terrorism. Mm -hmm. um, and what adds insult to injury even more, um, Israel just ran out of ammunition. Right. Mm -hmm. Just uh, yesterday, the, right after uh, the State Department condemned the bombing of the UNRWA, that a school mm -hmm. belonging to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency in a refugee camp north of Gaza, <coughs> Um, immediately after that, the Pentagon approved $250 million of aid, urgent aid and ammunitions for Israel. So Israel is tapping in United States strategic storage of ammunitions that is in Israel that the U.S. can use in emergency situations. And Israel, according to that agreement, can tap into that reserve uh, in emergency situations. But Israel didn't even have to rationalize an emergency and they were able to take some of that reserve, reserve to um, fire even more um, death and destruction on the Palestinians uh, in the Gaza Strip. Um, no one in Gaza 
no one can say that they haven't been personally affected. And in the last three plus weeks, um, 